Originally written in 1972 and then updated for a 1983 reprint, Alan Strange's text on electronic music has long been considered the bible of modular synth patching. In my new series about the book, I hope to delve into his techniques and to use the examples as a springboard for even more creative patching. So let's pry open the cover of this much celebrated text as we delve into these mysterious Stranger Synthics. A first peek into this fantastic looking book and we are presented with the reprint acknowledgements by Pat Strange and Jason Nolan. This project was a huge undertaking and Jason and his team should be congratulated for their amazing efforts in bringing to life this important text. Next, we come to the foreword for the text written by Stephen Rippenthal, and in it, he really gives us a sense of what the early days of electronic music were like. Allen's original book, first published in 1972, served as a sort of a manual for those entering the mysterious world of voltage-controlled and modular synths. By 1983, when the second edition came out, I was a starry-eyed young composer suffering the slings and arrows of being the first student to use a computer to make music in my university. Next, we get a very revealing description of the book by the author himself, and then we get some biographical information about Alan Strange, the performer and composer. And here we are at chapter one. The first three chapters of the text give us a good overview of the history of electronic music, the components of sound itself, and a basic understanding of some of the parts and pieces of electronic musical instruments. If you're just starting out, these are three excellent chapters, but they also make an excellent review for those with more experience. And chapter four is where all the fun starts. By this point, Alan has started to give us some exercises that we can try. So let's take a look at one of the first ones, a very simple percussion patch. This first patch is very, very simple, but really effective. I'm simply patching a tip top an AFG and a Hertz donut oscillator through a little IntelliGel mixer I've got here on the bottom and then into a Polaris filter that I've currently got set as a low pass. I'm using square waves from all of the oscillators and then I'm essentially pinging the filter and you can hear me turning the resonance up and down. Now I'll start to bring in the other oscillators that I've got and we can hear them all mixed together. The oscillators are all set to run as LFOs and they're all running a little bit randomly. There's no synchronization between them. So what we're getting is a bunch of random little clicks that are being filtered. Now I've got all three of them in the mix and I'm gonna bring up the resonance a little bit to get it to ping a little bit more. And then next, I'll sweep our cutoff frequency a bit. It gives us some lovely, chirpy, almost woodblock tones. And now, I'm going to use a sine wave from the AFG to modulate the cutoff of the filter. This is my own little addition to Alan Strange's original patch. But it's endless fun to set up something simple like this and then see ways that we can make little variations to it. And now I'll bring in some much needed reverb. And we'll have a whole little Buchla-esque piece of music running. Next, I'm coming out of the AFG and I'm using another oscillation from that oscillator to sync the Hertz donut through its sync in. And then I'm gonna do the same with the tip top. 
I'm coming from the AFG oscillator to the tip top sync in and then this should change the rhythms that we're hearing they should run a little bit more in sync and for another simple variation I can change the Polaris filter type from its low pass filter to a band pass filter and I'll make some adjustments to the gain and my modulation and my cutoff and there we have it some banging bootless style techno In Chapter 5, Alan introduces the all-important concept of voltage control. With detailed examples and measurements, Alan Strange is able to explain how we use voltage control not only to offset modules, but to modulate modules. His rigorous attention to detail really makes this a must-read for anybody entering the world of modular synths. It really explains how voltages can be summed, inverted, attenuated to control modules in the way that we want them to change. On page 39, we see a fun little patch that uses inverted voltages to control oscillators. I remember toying with this patch on Korg MS-20s back in the old days. I've patched keyboard CV from the MIDI interface into my two oscillators, the tip top and the live wire AFG, but I've got the signal inverted before it heads into the AFG, and then I'm simply mixing the two of them. When played on the C note, they're in unison. Here's the tip-top oscillator soloed, playing up and down with the keyboard just as you'd expect. Here's the AFG oscillator, and it's tracking inversely. And of course both of them together for some lovely harmonic chaos. It's fun to find little spots on the keyboard where we get pleasing or harsh tones that we can return to simply with the push of a key. And a little pitch bend. And of course, who could resist adding a little bit of linear audio rate FM from the AFG to the tip-top oscillator? Thank you so much for watching. Please consider joining my Patreon and join me next time as we explore more Stranger Synthics.